A few weeks ago, a newly updated rendition of Cosmos premiered, inspired by Carl Sagan's 19 special, 1980 special. In it, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson described our time on Earth relative to a calendar year. If the beginning of our universe represented January 1st, he explained, then the history of our entire human existence has occupied one hour. In fact, the last hour on the last day of the year, December 31st. All of humanity relative to the entire history of the universe occupies less than an hour of its story. Our triumphs, our wars, from Leonardo da Vinci to Leonardo DiCaprio, we have existed in one cosmic hour. Now, immediately after watching this segment, I felt terribly insignificant. <laughs> All that I've ever done, everything that I will do, everyone that I've ever known, and so much more lies within that one hour. One cannot help but feel small. But then my optimism, uh, finally tuned, no doubt, to many years of involvement with Model UN, uh, started to kick in. I began to feel inspired. Look at all that we, as a human race, have done within that one hour. Yes, throughout our collective history, the human species has marginalized people based on the color of their skin, what religion they prescribe to, their gender, and who they love. We have waged wars and slaughtered millions in the name of greed, power, and perceived superiorities. But our humanity has also guided us to tear down the walls of oppression, and it has brought us together to build an organization to protect the rights of our fellow humans and promote dignity for all. Our history is rich with inspiration. We have come so far in that one hour, and evidenced by the existence of this conference and by the many faces in front of me and in the various overflow rooms, we continue to recognize that there is still so much work to be done. Our theme for this year, Equality for a Better World, acknowledges the progress we have made and how far we have yet to go. My four mothers may not have had the opportunities I have been privileged with. I can vote in elections, I can own land, and I attended university. I support myself on my own income. It's difficult to imagine that my own great-grandmother living in this world without many of those privileges. Even more difficult is thinking of our world today and acknowledging that gaping inequities continue to persist. Too many people in our world go without the privileges that I enjoy, and even worse, go without the rights that I deem fundamental to humanity. But history also serves as a guide for us. As we inch closer to a truly equal and just world, our world becomes better. Equality has proven essential for political, social, and economic stability. As such, for the majority of the complex issues highlighted at our conference this week, addressing inequalities will be central to the conversation. When in committee, I encourage you to engage with your fellow delegates find common ground, and embrace differences of opinion in order to address the most challenging problems facing our world today. Consider how we can all use the standard of equality for a better world to address economic disparities, gender inequality, scarce resources, environmental degradation, and universal access to technology, education, and healthcare. How can we take what we will learn this week to be creators of positive change, not only at this conference, but in the years to come. Now, I understand that this task may seem just a little bit daunting, um, but I have known and been inspired by enough delegates and Unman staff to doubt how much of an impact this one week can have on all of our lives. Eight years ago, I was sitting where you are today. I had never been to any Model United Nations conference before, I was nervous, and I had no clue what to expect. I was shaky on my rules of procedure, and the idea of speaking in front of a room full of people intimidated me. So you're not alone if you're feeling those things. 
But when I first walked into opening session of my committee, that all changed. Everyone from my regional block rushed towards me and asked what topic that I was going to be pushing for. 321, 213, 123, which one, which one? It was thrilling. From the first day in committee to my subsequent years on volunteer secretariat to today, Enman has been nothing but a positive force in my life. At the height of the recession in 2009, I couldn't get a job interview for the life of me. I sent out over 100 resumes and received one call back six months later with a request for an interview that ultimately led to an offer for a position. After I was selected for that position, which has led to my extraordinarily fulfilling work today, my supervisor and now mentor told me that he picked me over the other candidate because of a recommendation that my undersecretary general had made for me. Without Enmun, I do, I do not know where I'd be today. I hope that this week is the beginning of something just as powerful for each and every one of you. If one hour is enough time for enti our entire human race to go to grow into who we are today, imagine what we can accomplish with one whole week. Now, I imagine you're all very eager to begin the conference, but I have one request and one necessary order of business before we can begin. First of all, for all of those who are dialed in and savvy with Facebook and Twitter, please try to add hashtag, hashtag Nmun 2014 to any post about our conference. This conference is worthy of a massive social media trend. Just remember that if you can get into the 140 characters, that'd be great. And finally, before I complete the end of the next sentence, I'd like to ask you to remain in your seats and listen to the instructions on how to exit the room. Our executive director, Michael Eaton, will assist you. But now for the exciting part. I now declare National Model United Nations, New York 2014, open.